So today I'd like to show you how to configure the API Connect tool that's part of the IBM Cloud Pack for integration. Now, after you install the new IBM Cloud Pack for integration, you come to a platform home navigator here, which will have the six different products that are part of the Cloud Pack for integration. Today, we're gonna to focus on IBM's product, API Connect, which will allow you to manage your APIs within your enterprise. So one of the first things you're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and click API Connect. It'll bring you right down to a screen like this where I can go ahead and say Create Instance. Now, after I click Create Instance, it's gonna present you with a Helm chart with a number of different fields that you're gonna to have to fill in. I highly recommend that you go to IBM's Cloud Pack playbook, which will allow you to go step by step through the instructions of how to actually do a successful deployment of not only API management, but all the other products as well. So within when you actually do a deployment of API management, you're going to have a number of fields that you're going to have to collect a lot of different kinds of information, pool secrets, all those things are documented really well within the playbook. So I won't take you through that right now. But what you're going to get eventually is to a screen where you're going to have to start filling in some of these things that you collected. And so these are, this is all part of the Helm chart that you're going to fill the information in. And then you're, when you're going to actually create the instance of, in this case, API management or really any of the products. So after you go ahead and do that and you have a successful install, which I've seen a successful install take anywhere from one to two hours, and a lot of things are going to be dependent on, you know, that time frame where you have it installed. Is it a remote cloud? Is it a local instance? Um, you know, all, all those different kinds of things. Uh, the data center, um, the size of the, the cluster size that you created, you know, how many cluster members that you have, how many worker nodes within Red Hat OpenShift, uh, the size of those worker nodes as well. Um, and all that is documented fairly well, so I won't take you through that. But that does, you know, that does really affect the, the, um, the speed of which a deployment could occur. So I would really highly recommend you, you size properly. Um, and a lot of the instructions are in the documentation here, so I won't take you through that. Uh, but eventually, after you do the successful install, you'll get to a screen that looks a lot like uh, this, what I said before, is your Cloud Pack for integration. So I'm here, I did a successful install, and now I have an instance. So I can go ahead and click on here and my screen shows me that I have one instance of this ready to go. So you might wanna first go ahead and you think, okay, well, I'll click on that. And I'll, I guess I'll click on my instance that I created. And then that'll go ahead and take me to uh, take me to the API uh, Connect product and the manager, and I can go ahead and start creating some APIs. Uh, one of the things that you're going to find uh, with that is that there's actually more configuration that you need to do, which is what we're going to show today. Because you're going to get to a screen that looks like this, and there's not a lot on this screen, obviously. So you're not going to be able to create any APIs from this, not yet. So what we actually want to do instead, when I, when I click on here, I wanna click on the menu and bring up the manage instead. So I wanna go ahead and bring up the management portal. And that brings me to a screen that looks like something like this. This allows me to go ahead and start creating my topology, uh, my gateway services, my analytics service, um, my provider organizations, all the different things that I'm gonna need that we're gonna do here today to actually start creating uh, APIs with within the API Connect product within Cloud Pack for integration. So first, let's go ahead and create a gateway service so we can expose our APIs. I'm gonna go under topology and you'll see that I really don't have anything created yet, um, any services registered or anything. So let's go ahead and register a service and it gives you a couple different choices. I want mine to be um, compatible with version five uh, the gateway, so I'm going to go ahead and select that. Uh, I can give it some simple names of gateway one. Uh, again, you could have multiple gateways in here, so we'll just call it gateway one. And this is where you're going to want to pull 
the different addresses and you're going to want to make sure you saved all those different endpoints that you wrote down when you did the actual configuration and deployment of API Connect. So when I showed that earlier in the playbook, be sure you save those endpoints because this is where you're going to have to start actually using those endpoints. This is my management endpoint, so I'm going to go ahead and use that. Uh, I also have a gateway invocation endpoint, so I'm going to need that. Those are a little bit different. And I will go ahead and click Save and accept all the other defaults. What, one of the things I'm doing here with this install is I'm, I'm doing something that I would say almost like a minimum configuration that you need, which is going to be typical when you start a development project because you're not going to have to install totally everything and get everything configured to start get up and running right away. So here's our, you can see our gateway has been created. Now, I also want to be able to create, you know, see analytics with that. So I'm going to go ahead and create an analytics server or service. I call mine analytics one. Again, you could have multiple ones that are part of this. See different addresses and endpoints there. It fills in for me. So I'm going to go ahead and select my management endpoint for analytics. And I will go ahead and click save as well. Now you see that both of those have been created. So I have two services, a gateway and an, anal and an analytics service. And now I want to be able to associate that analytics service with the gateway. It gives me a nice handy link here. So I'll go ahead and do that. I pick the one that I have, my analytics service, and I say associate. So. We created it, we associated those two together, and now we need to be able to create a provider organization. So when you create APIs and you develop APIs and you deploy products and those sorts of things, you do that from within an organization. So we'll have to go ahead and create a provider organization. And I will say add, create an organization. And I call that demo org, good a name as any. And the address we want for the uh, user registry is filled in. And then we just have a username is I'm just going to go ahead and use admin for my username. Since our, and that's our administrator of our provider organization. So that'll create that. And it will also create a um, sandbox for us within the organization, which is really important because that's where we actually do a lot of the work. So all the screens and the things that I'm showing you right now is part of the more of the management, you know, server aspect. Whereas what we what we're probably going to interact with, you know, most of the time after we get everything created is more along the lines of the actual, you know, um, creating an API or, you know, exposure to an API, getting the analytics pieces, all those kinds of things are done through different through different addresses. So now we want to be able to go ahead and do our final step that we're going to need. And really that's associating the gateway, you know, with that provider organization's sandbox so we can start creating APIs and deploying APIs. So if I do that, if I go back and I look at my API connect again, and this time I don't want to manage, I want to go ahead and you know, start doing some development work. So I'll click back on that like I did before. And hopefully we're going to see our, this will take us to our demo org, which is our provider organization that we created. And as you can see, um, you know, before there were only like these two tiles and we didn't have a lot of these types of things here. So what we did by creating and configuring, we have actually added us, you know, the capability obviously to, to do something productive here uh, with the product and start develop, developing APIs. So we're going to want to go ahead and go into manage and you see it created a sandbox for us. So let's go ahead and open up that sandbox. I don't have any APIs or, or API products. So products are, are groups of APIs together. Um, and this will allow you to start actually, you know, doing these types of things. Uh, but one of the first things you, first thing you're going to have to do, uh, and you only need to really do this once, is you'll have to associate your gateway with 
the provider organization here in the sandbox. So if I click on my gateway services, I see I don't have any gateways found. And if I actually went to go and develop something right now, it would tell me that there are no gateways associated with it. It'll let me develop it, but I can't actually expose it without a gateway because the gateway is where you're going to actually hit the URL. So you, you hit the... Um, or you hit the API through the gateway URL, which then directs you, um, you know, through management to the um, actually target URL that very well may be hidden. So here, since I only have the one gateway, I'll go ahead and, and click my gateway one, save that. And this is pretty much all you need to do. Now you're ready to start developing APIs. I hope you found this uh, very useful. And I hope you are ready to go ahead and begin your development by clicking on this develop right here. Click add API and you'll see a number of different types of ways you can start adding APIs. So thanks very much for watching the video. In my next video, I'll go ahead and take you through more of the actual API development itself. But for now, I hope you found this useful in configuring API Connect it was part of the new IBM Cloud Pack for integration.